Okay, so we've got my uh, tile ready to go. And we're going to start with our white British paints pillow. And I've done a couple of tests with this color scheme already and it's looking fantastic. And she was just in here making sure that everything is great. So the colors I have are Holcroft Carbon Black, Matisse Silver. And this one's a little bit thick, just gonna thin that down. So Holcroft Carbon Black first. I'm doing a swipe style today using the Shelley Art Bloom method uh, and the recipe. So if you'd like to learn how to do that, you can do that at shellyart.com.au. So that was uh, Matisse Silver in our pouring medium. And if you are interested in taking the Shelly Art course, you can use my code at shellyart15mgrimer for 15% off the course. This is this little piggy sterling. If you're interested in buying the little piggy pigments, you can get them at fluid-art.co. Links to everything are in the description below. And you can also buy these awesome little uh, stirring spoons. They're perfect for these baby cups and any smaller containers. Really nice and light. A little bit flexible and the end is really uh, the scraper bit on the end is really sharp so you can get into all those corners and get any unmixed paint and pigment out of the bottom of your cups they're absolutely awesome uh, this color is golden's manganese blue hue mixed with this little piggy uh, blue eyes and now i'm going to take my cell activator which is atelier rich gold onto my tool and that's uh, atelier rich gold mixed with australian flow troll Tapping off the excess, and I'm just going to do an interesting looking swirl pattern. I've got my cup on the side here for all my runoff pillow and wastage. And always keep a paper towel handy in front of you to wipe off your swipe tool. You want to make sure that your swipe tool is nice and clean between each uh, swipe so that you're not contaminating colors. And now let's give this a spin. That looks lovely. Sometimes the simplest color schemes work the best. So in this case, we're just using metallics, neutrals, and blue. And it really accentuates that single color that you end up using. I'm just shifting the weight of the paint off center slightly so that I cover this back tile, the back corner of the tile. Scrape off any excess so it doesn't fling off the side of the spinner. And we're nearly there. I might just pick up some of this runoff paint and just put it here on the edge. And all that's going to do is help that paint to shift to the corner. Now when I'm doing swipes, I put on less pillow paint than I normally would for a bloom because I don't want the cells to stretch too much, but I also need to be able to spin off enough paint that my tiles aren't going to crack. The paint's not going to crack on these tiles. So a little bit less pillow paint will help you do that. So now it's reached all the edges and I've got a really nice design on there and my tile, my painting shouldn't crack because I've spun enough paint off. Okay, there is one beautiful tile. It's got some lovely shimmer, lovely sparkle in there. I'm going to continue on with this color scheme and I'll pop in if I've got anything to say. But it's pretty much more of the same. Just wanted to show you these lovely uh, color combination. And actually, I'm going to show you how to pour a coaster holder. So I've never done one of these yet. And I suspect that if I pour paint into these holes, it's going to be a problem. So what I may need to do is plug them with something uh, while I paint and then just remove that while the paint is still wet. So I'll try and experiment. Let's try this with a bit of paper towel and see how this works. So I'm just going to rip up a piece of paper towel and roll it up into a shape that's roughly the same length as these holes. And I'm going to thread that through. Gonna twist it in all the way to the bottom so the idea is that I'll be able to pull this out from the bottom once the paint is on there so I'm going to do that for all of the corners 
Now what I could do is just paint this and drill the holes out again later, which I will do if this plan doesn't work. And I don't think it is going to work because uh, that will mean that these edges aren't going to get covered with paint because they're not going to make it around here. So this is going to be a little experiment and I'm going to keep that in this video so we can see what happens and you can learn with me. So I've got that last one. Okay. Now let's see what happens when we pour on this. This may or may not work. Uh, so pillow in the middle as usual. And what I may have to do is just paint these edges and corners. I'm going to do that around the sides where that design is not going to reach. Now the other option I may find I have to do is uh, either painting or priming these first or not cutting the holes until the design has been applied. So blooming on these and then cutting the holes out of the edges. So again I'd like to credit this design to Natalie Ashley from uh, Natty J's Creations. She came up with this design and was so kind to let me show it off on the channel. And she does make these blanks, I believe. So if you want a coaster holder design, I believe she makes these and sells them on her website. So let's go with, I think I may change up where I'm going to layer my blue. I think it's stealing the show on the top, which we kind of want, but not too much. So I'm going to put my blue on top of the black and see if that makes a difference. And we're going to follow up with our Matisse Silver and Sterling. Again, I put all the links to my colours and descriptions in the description box below. Get that gold cell activator on there. And let's go for a swipey swipe. Now, having the uh, paper towel on there made that very difficult to navigate around, hence the squiggly shape. That may not be the best option. Okay, just centering my design, and I think I really like how that blue is sitting much better now. So I'm going to put that as the second mask colour. Let's spin that out, and I've got paint going everywhere. So one thing you have to remember that if you're doing something smaller but taller, the paint's going to fly off a lot, a lot further. So uh, I, ideally, next time I do this, I am going to put a, my bigger spinner on here so the paint doesn't fly off. Okay, so it is sort of flowing around the sides here. Keep giving that gentle spins. I need to maneuver the center a little bit. We get even coverage. Now I wonder if I can pick up some of this paint and just drop it off the edge. It looks a bit dodgy. Uh, just to make sure that it's all covered in the same even coat of paint so there's no bare patches, flat patches that look really weird. But if you can sort of pick up the paint and match the colour, it'll drip down and it'll look more natural, I guess. And I do want to take these paper towel bits out while it's drying. So right before I put it aside, I'm going to take those out. Right, let's trim that up. So the other thing I could do is pour on this and then just paint the sides plain white. That's another option. But having the pour go all the way down the side is part of the appeal of this style. So I'm going to try my best to have that happen. Now 
I don't think that looks too bad. Now the next one, I'll do it without the paper towel and we'll see what, uh, what happens where those holes are if the paint moves around the holes. Also, I haven't um, taped up the bottom of this, I just realised. That's probably a mistake. But, as it is MDF, I can easily sand that back. This is just a little trial. So, there we go, that's our little design. And I'm going to pull the paper towel out from the bottom. If I can. I may need some tweezers. There we go. So the idea is that we're keeping the drill holes clean so that when the acrylic dowel rod goes in there it fits in nice and snug. Uh, if the if there's too much paint in there the rods won't fit. There we go. And likewise for the resin. Doesn't look too bad. So I'll put that aside and we're going to experiment and see how that dries. <clears throat> Now the next one, I'm going to pour straight on the surface. I'm not going to plug up those holes. And this one will be our second experiment, and I will drill out those holes afterwards anyway. Okay, so I've taped up the back of this one really quickly. And let's try this without the paper towel in those holes now. So that first initial spin that I usually do I have to be really careful with the coaster holders because they are so much higher up there is a lot more force the higher up you go with a smaller surface so take that into account use a bigger table bigger platform if you're doing these so nice gentle spins is the way to go apparently so the paint is getting trapped in the holes Fill in the edges with the paint that's run off. Now this becomes a little bit harder when you have areas that the colour should be. Because you sort of have to pick up those areas of colour to use it in that spot. But hopefully as it spins and stretches that little bit more, it's going to fill in that area and make it not look so conspicuous. The last little bit here. Okay. Now, let's scrape up the little bits that are on the side so we don't get paint flinging off at me. Okay, and let's go for a bit of a bigger spin this time. Let's see where that centre is sitting. Got a fair little bit of paint on there still. Just shifting the weight of that centre so it all flows nicely. that one's done. So if we did coat all of the edges we got there. Whether it's done evenly or not that's uh, up to be decided. So hopefully that paint will drip off, will run off down the side and there's enough there that gravity will do its work and it's not going to set up before it has a chance to drip. There's another coaster holder. So this will be a good comparison to see whether it's better to drill the holes first and then pour or whether it's better to pour first and then drill the holes in the edges. Um, I have drilled through paint before, it doesn't make much of a difference if you're drilling through the paint, so you can do it. Um, it's just a matter of figuring out a process that works. So I'm going to go ahead and paint all of these tiles and I will be back when I'm ready to do my placemats.
Okay, so I've done all my coasters and now I'm back with my placemats. So all I have done with these is I have cut out a piece of six millimeter MDF. I've cut this to 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. So our standard plates here are about 28 centimeters across the top. So I've made this just slightly larger and uh, the customer, my mother-in-law, she's requested uh, square ones. So they're not exactly square. I couldn't calibrate my drop saw to get exactly square, but they're close enough. And all I've done is I've cut them down and I've used my router table to put a very, very shallow bevel on the edge. So the bevel uh, will just mean that there's no sharp corners uh, reaching over the top here. And what that will mean is that the paint should flow nicely off the edge and drop nice, nicely down to the bottom. Uh, so I've already gone ahead and taped up my other placemats and I wanted to show you how I've done that. It's the same way that I tape up everything. Put the tape along the back and for these I put a crease on the edge and cut straight down with the craft knife. Okay, and I will spin the whole board. That's gonna be the easiest way to do this. And normally I just stick that down, make that crease, lift this back up, and use my straight edge knife to cut along that bevel. Um, it's a lot easier doing this when it's at hand level, so up on the platform isn't the best way to do this. I'm struggling a little bit. But for demonstration purposes, it will do. Cut nice and close and you should get a really nice clean cut. Having a nice sharp blade here is very important as well. Working with dull knives is going to result in rougher cuts. And it's not going to leave a really nice finish on the back of your placemat. All I will do with these is paint the back uh, the same color as my pillow paint, which in this case is going to be white. So that's ready to go. And before I paint each one of these, I'm just gonna give it a quick wipe down with a microfiber cloth um, to get rid of any sawdust that may be on them. And that's gonna prevent any chunks getting into the paint and ruining the finish. So this is my sawdust cloth. Just a quick wipe down. Might as well go and do them all at once. And it's just literally very, very quick. Just to get anything loose off the surface. Now, the reason I added the beveled edges to these is because when I poured on my experimental boards the other day, the sides were really rough and you can see the texture of the MDF through the paint. So I didn't want that. And so I beveled the edges and sanded the edges nice and smooth. And now we're ready to paint. So I've got my British Paints white pillow paint here. And I am going to spread this nice and evenly across the surface of the placemat. And I don't think my placemat is centered. It definitely is not. Which way is it spinning? Okay, here we go. And these are going to take a lot of paint because they are quite a big surface. So what I will need to do, that's most of my white pillow in that can. I do have another one. What I will do, this is the perfect opportunity to use up leftover pillow paints because they won't be seen. So I've got some that I mixed up earlier today. And this is just the scrapings from the coasters. And I'm going to pour that just around the outside. And you pro can probably see that it's more of a dark, darkish gray color than it is white. But again, we're not gonna see that because that's all going to be spun off the edge. So let me move my spinner up a little bit. That's looking better. Okay, now for this, because it's a bigger surface, I'm going to use a bigger swipe tool and we're going to put a little bit more paint on. So I do want to keep the direction of the swipes similar to the coasters and I may just need to put more color on these. A 
black, our blue. So again, I am putting a little bit more, but I'm not putting overly much. I'm not going overboard with it because I still do want that negative space. And I find with bigger pieces, the negative space is more effective than on smaller ones. Still looks good, but more effective on these bigger sized artworks. And our cell activator. Again, not putting too much on my swipe tool, just enough to coat the back in a nice thin, even layer. And then we're going to swipe. Nice and simple. Right, that's looking really good. I'm just going to tilt it back this way a little bit so we've got some even spinning and let's spin that out. There we go already, you can see all of that grey has spun off the edges. I'm just going to pick that all up, put that back in the cup, and that'll go for the next lot of pillow. So I will use white in the centre, and then that grey on the outside, just to fill everything. Now because the bottom edge is bevelled, what I'm trying to do as I'm scraping is just paint that bottom edge underneath. Just so that everything's nicely covered. Oh, that looks stunning. Love it. So normally what I would do here is that big swath of blue in the middle, I would uh, take a skewer and run it through, but I think I'm going to leave it because I quite like how that's looking. And I'm just picking up some paint and covering the edges here. A nice slow spin will make sure that they're all covered in the next one. Just making sure there is some paint there so that as gravity takes effect it'll pull the paint down over the, that side bit where sometimes it can be a little bit difficult for the paint to grab now that we've got our design spun out let's do a nice slow one And I saw a lump. That's got to go. And another one here. They've got to go. We don't want lumpies in our paint. Get out of here. Okay. So there we go. That nice slow spin has pushed all of that paint over the edge. And now I can spin enough to get all of that extra paint off. Just moving the center there's a lot of paint right here so just tilting it off center so that will move evenly and spread and I might bring it down this way just a touch there we go all right big spin Center bits now evened out, now become part of the entire layer. Oh no, there's a big gooba right here. Hopefully I haven't messed that bit up. Don't it's probably just come from the cup because it is used up uh, pillow paint. Or it could have even been from the scraper, from this. So, just to make sure I'm not introducing any new ones, I'm going to use a separate cup. Because once I reuse pillow paint once, I generally try not to reuse it again. Just because it can dry up and form those crusty little bits. And I think that is a beautiful looking placemat. And having the bevel under here as well, what I was struggling with the other day, was the boards getting stuck underneath because they suction themselves to the spinner. So 
So having that bevel allows you to get the scraper underneath and lift it up. There we go. So very important when you're working with house paint to work quickly because it sets up much faster than acrylic paint does. And if the paint starts to dry, it will leave marks. So when you're doing bigger pieces, you really want to make sure that you're getting all your colors on, spinning everything out as quickly as possible. Uh, so your paint doesn't start drying on you and leaving channels and uh, lumps in your dried paint. So that's worked beautifully to stretch that out to the other corner. Now I'm going to spin it slower to cover those edges. And then I will do a really big spin to push all of this extra paint over this edge. And I'm going to angle the uh, artwork on the spinner a little bit further towards that corner so that all of the force is being redistributed and sending all the paint that way. So pushing it up just a little bit further and a nice slow one. Gonna let all of that paint drip over the edges. Beautiful. And now a really big one to move that rest of that grey part off the edge. Nearly gone. Done. Okay, so you can see how a slow spin to cover those sides and then a really big spin to cover the top. There we go, just touching up any edges and bits that I might have missed. Again, pushing the paint underneath to that bevel. Alright, and scrape off. And there's another placement. I think that looks absolutely stunning. It's going to go so well with these coasters. So I do have a bit of grey being mixed in here somehow. So I'm going to just use my pillow paint just very slightly over that edge. And then just a spin to get that off and even that all out. one up and let's move on to the next one. Now I should also mention uh, I only taped up the edges of this because I can always sand everything back if I need to. Um, I like to keep the edges clean just so I'm not interfering with any of the bevels. Uh, they already look good as they are and it's a lot easier to sand the inside than the outside of the piece so that's why I've done that. And it's also to save on tape. And if I do decide to put a piece of cork or something in the middle uh, and on the bottom, that's going to hide any of that dripped paint or anything that I've stuck on with my fingers in the middle bit anyway. Okay, so I'm going to continue with these. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope I've shown you something uh, you might not have seen before if you haven't seen anyone pull placemats before. And if you're liking what I'm doing, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.